Shalom friends, welcome to Daf Reactions, Yivamot 2. This tractate is all about Yibum. I will attempt to explain it thusly. There's a law in the Torah that if a husband dies without having kids, his surviving brother has to marry his widow. Because the dead man needs an heir, and this arrangement perpetuates his name and legacy within the Jewish people. The woman, the Yevama, is supposed to marry the brother, the Yevam, and nobody else. Now back in the day, this was a way to protect the widow economically and socially. I roll deep breaths, you know the drill. But come on, we know that many, if not most, in-laws uh, can't stand each other. So this would be the worst on a multitude of levels, especially since the Yevama is automatically his, and if she does not marry him and marry somebody else, she's an adulterer. So if the brother and the widow are just like, no, hell no, I'm not marrying this person, there is technically a way to get out of it. It's a ceremony called chalitza. This is how it goes. The woman says to the man in front of witnesses something along the lines of, I can't believe you're letting your brother down like this. What's wrong with you? You suck. And in turn, he says, well, I don't want her. So at that point, she takes his shoe, throws it, and then spits on the ground in front of him. And she tells him he's a loser without a shoe. Now, I didn't make that up. You are free to Google it. I'll wait. You're back. The ritual cancels the deal and they're able to go marry other people. But like everything else in the Talmud, this type of marriage is complicated by approximately one million other factors. Right off the bat in the Mishnah, we get like a BuzzFeed listicle of the 15 categories of women you can't marry because, spoiler alert, that's incest. For example, the brother can't marry his brother's widow if she is his daughter or granddaughter or mother-in-law or father-in-law's mother or his wife's sister or the wife of his brother who died before he was born. You get the picture. But beyond that, we have an added layer of, huh? Because sometimes multiple wives could be involved. Yes, indeed. Remember, this is a polygamous society. So look, this is the first off in the tractate. And my first reaction was, of course, a general ugh, about women being categorized and defined solely by their relationships with the men in their lives. But you knew I was going to say that. My second reaction was, oh, wow, this tractate is 122 pages long. We're going to be trapped in this until July. But my third reaction was like, wait a minute. Let me shift my thinking a bit. What if, hear me out. All of my years as an obsessive Game of Thrones fanatic was to prepare me for understanding this tractate. Mind blown paradigm shift. Now I see this list of 15 incestuous relationships and I think this is actually a really great start for a Targaryen dating app. So on that note, Shalom HBO, I am available to consult on House of the Dragon or literally anything else through a Talmudic perspective. Call me, I'll be here until... July.